All right, guys, in this episode, we're going to talk about the best possible formations and player playing style advanced instructions for quick counter. Now, I get it. Most of you guys use different stuff. I am suggesting something that is, of course, it is meta and also you see it in eSport. I'm talking about something if you practice with it for hundreds of games, eventually you become good. And I get it. Most of you guys find this whole 4-2-1-3 with... No defenders, narrow strikers, kind of boring to watch or play the game, played against. I get that. Personally, I have no issue with people using the same meta in the past 15 years. My problem with it is that the meta hardly changed for the past 15 years. Otherwise, some of us like to use different stuff. We enjoy it more, maybe not be that effective. And also, I also believe meta, it's only more effective for people who played meta for years. If you never played the meta system, which stands for most effective tactic available, combined with using the game's weak mechanic to your advantage. I got two more videos explaining um, the best formation and tactic variations and meta system on eFootball 23. It's, it's, I think it's on the playlist. Uh, it's exactly the same. These videos are 423, but it's exactly the same on 24. So let's straight get into it. There are two main formations for quick counter. Now, first of all, you use the base of the uh, formation, which is, this is console, you pick something like this in a way for quick counter and then you customize it. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, just click and move and then, you know, with triangle you change position. I don't know how much basic some of you guys are in a way, but that's what the system is. Uh, in a way that you basically attack with three and four, defend with six and seven. You have to become good to be able to be ready to counter with two, three players. That's the idea of the system. In fact, most people use this very defensive system in a long ball counter. It's a nightmare to break and play against it. So if somebody used the system for hundreds of games for years, of course they're going to use that better than you in a way, apart from generally being better than you. And most of these goals are scored in the system, really. Most of them are simply done, like most of the assists are done in this game by simply by your strikers. Like, your fullback is not involved. Your midfield is just there to intercept and punt it to the final third. You just won two quick passes to the final third, and then you dribble there. Most of the goals are done by cutback tappings. But gameplay, we got to get into it later. You have an attacking midfielder like Maradona. He's going to link up with these guys. Most people even make him assess or offensive. A lot of time, people defend very, very deep. Yes, you want to put him over here to fill that gap in a way. But ideally, you want that AMF to be like a complete player. Ideally, hope. And then you have three, two, nimble, fast goal pushers. You want quick. This is whole the, if I was to pick a team for quick counter, probably I wouldn't even use Patrick Vieira. Maybe I would use somebody like Macarelli or Davids. Because that's how the quick counter works. When you lose the ball, the team presses. When you attack, you got to be fast. You got to nimble players. You got to need high acceleration, offense awareness. And the advanced instructions are very simple for the uh, the system, really. Defense on Tomiyasu, even though he's a defensive fullback. And defense on Makareri. Now, if you notice, I have a Makareri here because sometimes he will overlap even with defense on him, even though he's a defensive fullback. So I have somebody him for... Or if you like to have, if you're losing, maybe defense on two DMFs and have a fullback in the bench. As you can see, I have somebody a little bit more offensive. Um, I sub them on if I need it. But to simplify this really, quick counter, this is the best system for quick counter. Plan B, maybe, for sub-tactic here, 4 2 3 one. That'll be something to manage the game. Or A lot of time you can use that as your main tactic, but the whole point of side midfielders like Mpape and Neymar they're supposed to help out in defense. Neymar and Pape, they don't have any defensive attributes, so it's pointless to use players like Neymar and Pape in a 4 2 3 1 system. You'd be looking for some creative playmakers, or like somebody like Pedri, for instance, will be suited for these positions if you play 4 2 3 1 in a way. Like if you use the 4 2 3 system for quick counter properly, or maybe some uh, crossing specialist or some skillful fullbacks, for instance. That is the system for quick counter, if I simplify it. If I've forgotten anything, uh, you guys comment down below and let me know. I've tried to make the video straight to the point. It goes as simple as that, man. This is, uh, I mean, kind of not in everybody's knowledge, but when it comes to quick counter, you can't go anything uh, better than that in a way. My personal favorite for quick counter, I like something like this. 
you got Maradona here as an attacking midfielder. And I would put Neymar here as an attacking midfielder. This is something I personally prefer. Or maybe have this guy wide and have this guy tuck in. Neymar drifts out wide, he becomes more central, fullback overlaps, and so on. So this is my, um, I would say, second option for quick counter if I was to use. And this is a pretty effective setup in a way. Defense on Tomiyasu, defense on Makarevi, quick counter or Mpape and Owen or Mpape and Neymar, depending where you're facing, where you want to attack and so on. But if you are going to use quick counter, counter targets, if your opponent is time wasting and you need to press him, if you have quick counter target on Mpape, you cannot use Mpape to press. So you have to you have to make sure if you want to be able to press with these players, you can use counter time. A lot of time, you know, people time waste or you need to press. A lot of time I don't use it. I prefer that. Or most of the time, if a, if a guy is annoying me on one side, you know, I would use tide mark. And if he's annoying me on the left, then I make sure I tide mark him. If he plays like more than 50% or six, more than 50%, 40% on one side, then I prefer to use tide marking. But that is the system of counter really now of course i will have more videos and more uh, depth details in a way depending on how this game to how the, this current patch goes out this time is long ball counter the formation again it's four two one three slightly different from the quick counter one you might want to check it out because we're playing long ball uh, long ball counter tactic here uh defensive transition is a little bit safer you don't necessarily need two defensive midfielders and you can easily have a uh, two fullbacks in a way you don't need to go like three cb you could do that if you feel safer, in a way. Uh, but personally, I think the best balance will be a defensive fullback and an offensive fullback. Um, if you feel like you're struggling, you need three to four players back all the time, just make sure one of your fullback are able to play CB. So tuck them in. But remember, if you have a center back in a fullback position tucked in, that means you're going to give a lot of w empty spaces on that side and smart players can exploit it. Everything you use have disadvantage and um, advantages, of course. Now here, you got to need your solid DMF. Uh, Patrick Vieira obviously is a box-to-box. -box. I usually have to use defense on him, but I've trained him very defensively too. The instructions are simple. Defense on Patrick Vieira, defense on a fullback, counter target on two strikers, whether Neymar Chevchenko, uh, Romaniga and Chevchenko. Uh, deep line sometime, if I'm facing somebody who plays 4-2-4, then I would go defense on two fullbacks and deep line on Patrick Vieira because he's got four strikers and I've got four defenders. You know, you got to always have an extra, uh, you don't want to get outnumbered, you know, number superiority. Uh, now here, I usually like to with a solid defensive midfielder, a midfielder that can link up with my defensive midfielder and also my striker. And of course, the striker links up with the front three. Whether it is your whole player, ideally you want somebody uh, fast with good passing, good weak foot, outside color, first time through, through, through passing is an absolute must um, skill for your attacking midfielder and ideally whole player now Cruyff is deep playing forward deep playing forward is no active as AMF I like Cruyff but otherwise if I go with something more effective definitely Kaka now in matches if you feel like your opponent's defending very deep gives you a lot of space in the final third boom push Kaka up you're going four to four that could work um, beyond that I think if you want to like I call it easy mode long ball counter 4-2-1-3 is as simple as that. If you want something a little bit more, uh, the other formation I would always recommend, it's something more for triple two. That's another kind of effective formation in my opinion. It matters what kind of players do you use. Maybe I will make a video about the four triple two system. Um, if you guys want it, comment down below. But that is the main formation is 4 2 uh, one, three. If you want something a little bit unusual, a little bit more exciting, a little bit more freedom, then I love the 4 triple 3 system. I've seen a bunch of people on even uh, top 10 using it as well. I've used that system. Uh, the instructions are very simple. Deep line or defense on Vieira. I would only use deep line if my opponent's playing 4 to 4 But if you're playing against somebody who's going 4 to 4 or he has 4 3 3 but two prolific wingers, fast players, then you may have a problem, especially against prolific wingers. Most people just use Neymar and Messi. You're fine in a way. By the time they reach your flank, these these players come back. Now, the defensive option for this one be you can use deep line on Roberto Carlos, for instance, if you want him to help out. Uh, but I'd like to make a freedom. It's like a Conte system in real life. You have a natural fullback who help out in defense, and you have a natural winger who would help you create, 
picks up the ball from a defense, links up with Messi, links up with Totti. Ideally here, you don't necessarily need a whole player in a way because it's already an offensive system. You've got three strikers. You could easily use a solid creative playmaker. You can use a classic number 10 even if you have your favorite player. As long as uh, has a decent passing, through passing, skill, one-touch passing and so on, first time finishing. So that's one of my favorite uh, um, triple three system or I call it total football uh, setup as well. You can set up a sub tactic as well here, shape it a little bit differently, uh, something a little bit more defensive, or you can even go maybe um, two defensive midfielders if you want to make this a little bit more of your, um, let's say, something a little bit more defensive, having that double pivot of two defensive midfielders. But obviously you're going to need a little bit of a more um, versatile players in a way. So for long ball counter, 4-2-1-3, 3 1 3 3. I think with long ball counter, you can use a lot of variations of three at the back because the defensive transition uh, when it comes to long ball counter is different. Again, you select these and you flick this, and will, uh, every tactic has like three movements. And quick counter, long ball counter, position in some patches are effective. Out wide is very, very unusual. I don't think it's coded right. Long ball, I actually played the best position game in one of the patches on the football 23, but right now it's just, it's just weird. Makes my team act weird. I don't think it's coded right. So it doesn't go beyond those three tactics. Mainly is long ball counter if you want a safer defense transition. Otherwise, if you like pressing, play quick passing. 24-7, then it's quick counter. So that's what it is when it comes to the long ball count. For position game, in my opinion, and an opinion of many people who I value their opinion, of course, 4-2-1-3, but shaped like 4-1-2-3. Usually, you need a lot of players up front. You need three strikers. You need two attacking midfielders or at least CMF, AMF. You don't need double DMF. You cannot play defensive and play position unless the purpose of you playing position is for game management, but that's a different thing. You need at least one attacking fullback, ideally two, and if you do that, then you definitely need a solid anchor man. You can use Vieira with defense on him or deep line if he pays 4-4-2. Now, the idea of to make position game work in this game, it's literally by you having position of the ball 70% of the time. That's the reason uh, you can't win in a way. These players are selected, they have one thing in common. Every single one of them has one touch pass skill. Every single one of them. Apart from two of my center backs, one, apart two of my defenders. Every single one has one touch pass. If my defender doesn't have one touch pass, then I make sure he has at least weight. Those passing skills are kind of matters. Ideally, you want to pick a goalkeeper who's good with ball control a little bit, like Ederson. Ederson. Is Ederson from Man City? He's a very rare goalkeeper who actually have a decent passing in a way. But it's not that important in a way. The goalkeeper is not going to... This is not real life. If you do a couple of passes with your goalkeeper, people already think you're time-wasting. Because the idea of position is to play position outside your own half. If majority of your passes is in your own half, then you're just kind of frustrating your opponent to come at you. I don't, I don't consider that to be position game in a way. It's, it's just kind of a mind game. I don't play like that personally. The second tactic, in my opinion, when it comes to position game, it's a little bit more risky, which is just a classic 3-2-3-2, three, two, three, two, really. Ideally, you want to have one player who's help out defensively, a fullback, and a natural fullback. Now, if you cut in with Mpape or you're going to have someone else who's fast with good passing, but you already have that. You don't want to be too defensive on both sides in a way. Or you can. A lot of time I use this system for position, but I use deep line on both wingers, like Roberto Carlos and Cafu I have here. And you absolutely need that double pivot. If you have two offensive wings, then you need two super defensive uh, defensive midfielders. And there's no point if you use defense on those two guys in position, you need them to be involved. When you're on the ball, you need more numbers to give you more passing option. Now, of course, you can use Mpape here, for instance. You can drop Toti. I'm, I'm picking players that I personally like. I don't always go with the meta. Otherwise, I know I can use Romario, Karl Heinz, and Pape will be a better options. This is just an example of um, position game formation and instructions. When it comes to advanced instructions, I think for position game, I usually just use counter target on a player that I don't want it to be tired, really. I want the freedom of all my players. If a particular player annoys me, like on one side, maybe I use defense on 
uh, one player in a way. Ideally, it's always good to have a defensive fullback, but most of your players need good tight position, need good speed, need good passing, need good technique overall. You can't just use any player and make position game work consistently in the long run. Um, so that is the three part of quick counter, long ball counter, and position game. There's, of course, more details I can get into it, but a lot of you guys ask me about the best formation for position, long ball counter, quick counter. And instead of making a tweet about it, I wanted to get into the video so we can, you guys can see it a little bit more detail and you can comment down below, share your opinion, what other formations do you use for position. If you use any formation with position game or quick counter, long ball counter, any system that you don't see that often, you're doing good with it. After 100 games in Div 1, if you can keep 70% win ratio, I think that's a good uh, that's a good um, percentage in my opinion. After 100 games in Div 1. Because remember, most people in uh, Top 100 played like 400 matches. There are many people who are uh, lurking in rank 500 because they don't have time to play 10 hours a day in a way. So ranking is a matter of time as well, not just only being good in the game. Now, remember, I spoke about best formation and tactic only football 23. It's on the playlist. Pretty similar to football 24. This is the third video about uh, I made one for position, quick counter, long ball counter, the best possible formations. Now, these are things I, especially the, the meta quick counter and the meta long ball counter, these are things I can't use it if the game really pisses me off. When I choose the meta system, I call it easy mode. 4 2 one, 3 you know, quick counter, long ball counter. I call it easy mode or recovery mode. With that, I usually get great sticks, but personally, I get bored of it. I'm not going to call the meta boring. People enjoy what they like. The only thing is boring is that meta always been the same in the past 15 years in a way. But also, I, I see a lot of variations of different systems in the top 100 at the moment. I mean, the game is very weird, dude. Sometimes bang average cards do like this master card under AI. I mean, if if a bang average card is doing a, a ability that Nesta does under AI and you're good to control on them, then why do you need Legends? I'm not saying Legend doesn't help, but if I play 10 games, more than five of them, I still got to play very fucking good, excuse my language, to be able to dominate. But anyway, hope you find the video useful. I have more in detail videos coming up soon. Till next time.